Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our show. You're on Channel 6 TV. I'm Ken Bobo, community focus here in Nelson County, and glad you could join us tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the education. I mean, that's one of the most important things that we can talk about in just about any time is the education of ourselves, but also education of the of the our, our grandkids and our nieces, nephews, just anybody in the county. We're putting a lot of responsibility and a lot of it into the hands of people such as uh, our uh, gentleman here with us today, our new superintendent here at Barstow City Schools, Mr. Ryan Clark. Ryan, uh, welcome, John. Oh, thank you very much. And I appreciate, first of all, you taking the time to to do this. You're getting ready to gear up for, a, I would say, a year of school, but as we talked, it's your first year of school, basically. Anyway, you see. It is. It's definitely in this role. It's my first, yeah. For sure. Well, and, and again, it is when we talk first. Been through a lot of first, obviously. The first time you and I probably kind of had a conversation was years ago. You were in a middle school, which, mm -hmm. but that you'd already been through a lot before you got in there. So, what? Tell us about Ryan Clark. What? What? I know you were raised in an education family. So, yeah. uh, is that what sort of pointed you in this direction? I, I think, no doubt, uh, influence from from family and, and uh, their commitment to being educators strongest influence for me uh, being moving to uh, educational leadership was would be my dad definitely, uh, who served as a principal for 10 years huge influence in me for me yeah and your mother she was yeah. in, the, in the education field as well she was she uh, served as food service director uh, for God uh, I want to say 15 years or so yeah. she'll, she'll see this and, and want to correct that I'm sure uh, but yeah, taking care of kids is definitely what my family's been all about. So let's talk about first. What was your in the classroom? What, what was that all about? Well, uh, a teacher. A teacher. Uh, I, my first year at Bloomfield Middle School, uh -huh. I taught seventh grade science, uh, which almost my entire career has been in a middle school. Uh, I really enjoyed it and um, learned so much every day. Uh, as a as a brand new teacher, I mean, especially in that first year, every day was was a brand new first. You know, getting your second and third year under your belt, you definitely got more comfortable with what you did. But I knew I knew right then that uh, I was in the right profession. Well, I've always said it takes a lot of patience to be a teacher and to, to somebody to a discipline to do that. But middle school is is even a little different. Elementary is one. Thing. The kids are coming in. They're, they're high school matured to some level. Middle school, you're getting them right at that age. Uh, you're not sure which direction they're going to go in yet. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. But I, gosh, uh, that, that, uh, I was drawn to that age, and, and I think that uh, maybe maybe more accurately called to be in the age group for the, for the years that I did that. And I served as a school principal total of uh, 12 years. Yeah. And being a principal, obviously, is more than going to the classroom. That's one thing. You're in the classroom. You you got a set, set of kids, but you go to the middle school principal. I mean, now you're in charge of the cafeteria. Now you're in charge of a, a transportation. And you got a lot of things that prepares you for the job today. Oh yeah, no, there's no doubt. I think uh, I feel very well prepared. Uh, not only in my job experiences, but also uh, pursuing my own uh, academics and pursuing higher education. Mm -hmm. You know, earning my doctorate from UK in 2015. That experience uh, added a lot uh, to my prepared for this job. Uh -huh. Well, getting your doctorate, I mean, is that something that motivated you from being a, in the classroom? Or is that because I think a lot of education for granted. People are not in the education business. We, we assume, you know, that we've got all the education. I've graduated high school. i got a bachelor's degree. I need, I, but do you constantly see yourself needing, say, more? Yeah. Do you, education right now <laughs> no, no. I, you, you hear this phrase often uh, in education about being a lifelong learner and uh, I think that anyone you talk to would recognize that learning never ends yeah. but uh, there, there is a uh, I'm definitely very committed to continuing to learn and grow there's no way that I figured everything out <laughs> and, and never will. so uh, again between life experiences and just learning uh, you know I will continue to, to learn and grow there's an art to being a teacher because I know a lot of people think, you know, I can walk in off the street that uh, has been in a profession for a long time, can walk in and uh, just teach. But a lot of times it's a, it's the art of teaching more so than the art of knowing a profession as, as much. Yeah, I, I think well said. I, um, 
something that we really uh, strive for and, and I have been very successful at uh, in this school district of Barstown City is, is relationships with kids. And uh, th that's the component that I think you're talking about, that, that not just anybody can do this, yeah. someone that can build positive and lasting impactful relationships with kids are the ones that are uh, the most successful. Well, coming into Barstown, you've been here for several years in the middle school. You've seen some of the problems, the issues. I mean, uh, you put a bunch of kids together from different social backgrounds and different educational backgrounds. I mean, it, it's always going to be friction. And there's no question about that. And you have to do that. But what do you see as the biggest challenge a, a child coming into the Bardstown schools has to do right now? What motivates them to be a good student or not be a good student? Well, I, I really think going back to the comment I made before, uh, the motivation comes from them having trusted relationships with educators and other adults that serve them. Yeah. So, um, you know, when when students are in our care, uh, we, we shoulder, proudly shoulder a lot of responsibility uh, in educating them, um, you know, from holistically, um, there's, there's social emotional well-being, yeah. uh, along with your academic well-being. I mean, I think that the professionals in this district really shoulder that burden and uh, and I think that's why a lot of our kids are so, so successful. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a team, obviously. I know you're the head coach of the team, basically. You're the John. I'm not going to say John Calipari or the, or, the, or, the, or the team because I don't know a, I don't know if any are UFL fans. But at the same time, do you have the team in place that is going to be make these kids successful? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, the, the team here is extraordinary. Um, you know, transitioning into the role, uh, coming from the principal role, uh, I already have very strong relationships with, with the school leaders and the other educators in the district. Uh, the team here is top notch, and I, uh, I, I would put them up against any other team out there if you think yeah. about competition, uh, but of course our job is to educate kids, and they do it better or as good as anybody out there. Well, you've been part of this team for years, and uh, Bardstown has gotten several recognition and awards over the last several years and uh, why do you think that is what is it you did to make Sparkstown been successful and then exceeded some of the goals that uh, people have set for you know I, uh, I, I think the there's probably not one thing in particular and I, I find myself wanting to talk about relationships and again that's so so valuable so important uh, but serving our customers and our customers are students and their families I think that is something uh, that the adults that work in this district, um, they again, they shoulder that burden uh, because they believe that is their calling and their responsibility to serve others. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't matter what job you do, uh, I see people do going above and beyond all the time from, from that housekeeping staff uh, that gets to know kids as they're you know working in the hallway to maintenance staff uh, that gets to know kids on a personal basis, bus drivers, uh, not to mention citizens and teachers. I mean, it, it's just people being willing to do whatever it takes to help kids be successful. Well, I said Bardstown has been a well known several years for having a good a good school system, clean school system, and, that, and one of the things about it. But uh, you, you, you're staying busy right now and putting your team in place. But what are the challenges? I know obviously some of them from the state. You want more money. Everybody mm -hmm. needs more money. Technology? Are we doing okay in technology wise? I mean, what, what what do we need more of, or what are we? Where are we? You know, um, it's hard to pinpoint because there is a long list. Yeah. Uh, uh, those, those things that, you know, uh, definitely state funding has has consistently gotten less and less, mm -hmm. um, yeah, especially if you really dig into to what has been provided in the past and what's it provided It costs now. a lot to run a school it system. Does. <laughs> it does. And, and, of course, you know, we uh, are so blessed to have such a committed community uh, that support good education. Uh, in this area, um, so we're able to accomplish a lot uh, with the resources that we have. Yeah. Uh, we have to be very responsible with our money and, and think things through. Um, but you know, there there really is a, a constant list of uh, evaluating what our needs are. Uh, I think just to be specific, I do think technology is something that we have to stay in front of and and uh, be very. Uh, 
aware of the changes that are coming. Well, it changes so rapidly. Mm -hmm. And just being, you know, what do our kids need? Mm -hmm. So um, that would be a great example of something that is a, just a reoccurring cost yeah. because we want to provide the very best for our students. Well, I know there's been a crisis statewide, obviously, with a, a teacher shortages in places or other issues with teachers. Are you? Do you feel like you've got the teachers you need for this year? Are you still recruiting? Is that a how does that work? So it's a, it's a that's a constant process. I do I do feel uh, again very fortunate to have the team that we have in place. Um, we we appear at right at this point to have every position filled. Um, there definitely is shortages in the state, for, especially for certain areas of educa uh, educators. But you know I think um, making what I can do as superintendent and and work hard to do is continue to foster that uh, environment that people want to be a part of. Uh, it, it helps also to, to be able to compensate people well, um, and, and we try to be very competitive there, but it's more about the environment that you create. Um, people that get into education do it because they love kids. Yeah. So if, if you create an environment where you can be kid-centered, uh, professionals want to be a part of that. So that was kind of a, you're looking at a pretty big enrollment this year? Oh, yeah. We're, uh, it, we, we do have a big enrollment. Uh, you know, again, you talk about that long list of things. You know, space is a constant conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, we're, we're in a really good position. Everybody is, is ready for that first day of school. Um, and and we, we really should have the spaces and the staff that we need. Um, that's everything that I've been told thus far. We're, we're in good shape. Well, good, good. So it's going to be an easy year for you and no problems at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I, uh, I've been an administrator too long to know that you don't get it all figured out. Yeah. Uh, but we are problem solvers, and I'm definitely uh, learned to be a problem solver. And uh, we're going to have things that we're going to encounter that we'll have to work together to solve, for sure. That's, yeah. that's part of the job. Well, right. We do appreciate you. I know, uh, again, you know, this is the first year at this, and um, and there's always things to learn and do, mm -hmm. and we know you're, but you've been around, and, and again, I think we, we, we talked about earlier, you prepared yourself for this for quite some time. It's not like you just walked in off the street and uh, didn't know what you're getting yourself into. No, so, uh, no, sir. No. <laughs> so, so, so when you walked into it, you had nobody to blame but yourself. That's, so. <laughs> you got that right. That's right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, and again, the school starting here in the next week or two. You got to make sure all the buses are ready to go, all the food's cooked in the cafeteria. I mean, it's a, it's a, a lot, lot of responsibility that the average person probably doesn't see, but uh, but it keeps you awake at night. Yeah, no doubt. There's a lot to think about. It's more than just nine to five job every day. And very much so. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, Ryan, like I said, I know you're going to do well. Appreciate you taking the time to meet with us here on Channel Six, and uh, we'll be stepping back in with you from time to time to see what's going on and, uh, and update us. And uh, like I said, Barstown Schools, uh, I know there's a, in good hands right now, but. Again, there's, as you said, there's always room for improvement. No doubt. Thank right. you. Ryan Clark here with the uh, Bart South Superintendent, Bart South City School District. And uh, school's about to start any day now. So, uh, again, we, your kids are in his hands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take care. We'll be back here in just a few minutes on Channel 6 TV right after this.